So now if you've never heard of CES, that is the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, 170,000 people, no joke. It is a nightmare for people who don't like to walk because that is all you do every day for like six straight days, walk, walk, walk. And really what I wanted to go ahead and do is go over what was in my camera bag to illustrate kind of all the stuff that I brought, all the things that I should not have brought, right, as a first time newbie, all right, and how I think I'm gonna change that next year. Let's get started. What is going on everyone, it is Mike, and welcome back to Tech 24 Seven TV. So as I told you in the, just in the beginning, brought a lot of stuff with me. Now my bag of choice was the Peak Design travel bag. This is the tra travel backpack, 45 liters. This is where I was carrying, I guess I would say majority of my tech. Now this is a bag that I'm, I've probably had for maybe six months or seven months, and I've traveled with it quite a bit. Uh, I do have the medium sized camera cube in there, and this is really where I'm putting the bulk of my stuff. So as for my camera, my camera that I brought with me, the only camera I brought with me was my Sony a7 III, which is what I'm recording this video on. Now this camera, I love the camera. I've had it since I think August of last year, August of 2018. Yeah, August of 2018. So it's almost, it's about a year and a half at this point. And really this is the camera I use for everything, for videos, A-roll, B-roll, stills, and I love the camera. The battery is great and it lasts a long time. Now I brought two lenses with me. I brought the 24 millimeter G Master, which you're watching this on right now, in addition to an 85 millimeter, which I use for a lot of my B-roll and close-ups because it's absolutely beautiful the way that I think the object is captured with that lens. In addition, I brought two batteries for the camera and all of that camera or the camera was itself was put into the small rig camera cage that I have for it. So a camera cage really, you insert the camera in the camera cage and it really gives you additional places to mount accessories to the camera. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what do you need to mount to the camera besides maybe a microphone? Well, it, it's, it could be a lot. <laughs> uh, for, my, for my specific setup, I don't record any of my content internally on the SD card. So all my content is recorded on an external video recorder slash monitor, which is made by Atmos. Uh, this is the Ninja 5, which uh, just look it up right now, making sure that I'm in focus. So uh, this external recorder, you know, it requires a separate battery, all right, from the uh, camera itself. It requires an HDMI cable in order to get the video signal from the camera. And it gives me flexibility with one, there's no internal record limit like there is on the Sony. You can record for as big as your storage is uh, or as far as amount of storage as you have. And two, it gives you flexibility with the files that you record in. Uh, they're a lot more easily digestible by your computer, right? Especially if you use a Mac because they're in ProRes. Uh, that's a, just a more uh, acceptable format or more easy, easily readable format for Macs opposed to the, gosh, XAVC, which is I think the name of the, the file format for Sony's. Uh, but you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. All that, now the camera itself is really small and light, but once you put it in the cage and you add a lens, it does get start to become quite heavy. So there's a couple of different attachments that I have for the uh, cage that I brought with, a couple different handles just to get a better uh, or an easier grip on it. And at the end of the day, you know, I actually didn't need to bring the Atomos recorder. I probably could have done without it but it did give me a little bit flexibility with capturing B-roll and you know using these files inside my computer because otherwise I'd have to pull them in and you know do some type of transcoding with those files and it would just be a little bit harder for my Mac it would take longer and it really wouldn't meet my goal of working quickly so that's why I brought that from there for my audio recording I brought my uh, Mix Pre 3 from Sound Designs which is my audio recorder and I brought my Rode NTG I think it's an NTG 2 or NTG 3 for to capture all of the audio that you're hearing. Now, that really wasn't too bad. The Mix Pre 3 can run off a USB-C power pack, like, you know, like a, like a Mopi brick, or a even plug into a USB-C charger uh, in, in the wall. So that's pretty flexible. And I really wasn't sure if I was going to record on floor audio, like being on the show floor, because I, I thought that the audio would be poor quality. Uh, just because of you know the amount of people, the amount of noise, and even though I thought that, I still brought a like a, a field microphone to to capture audio just in case you know I was going to interview someone or something like that. I had no idea. Again, my intention was to you know build relationships with people. If I had the opportunity to whether it's talk to someone more in depth, I would certainly go ahead and, and take advantage of that. And if I had the gear, I'd be able to go ahead and move forward. So in addition to my Mix Pre 3 for audio recording and the NTG, I also brought the Rode Video Filmmakers Kit. So you have a transceiver, you have a receiver, 
I'm sorry, you have a receiver and a transceiver. You have a mic and in addition, I bought some batteries because you know, you never know, you're gonna go ahead and, and record some audio there. Uh, but this was completely overkill, actually not even overkill, it was useless because I never, uh, I, I never used it at all. So I brought that inside of, you know, this little, uh, this, sorry for that, this little pouch. Overkill, didn't need to bring that. That's about two pounds, you know, all that gear right there. It was nice to have the flexibility, but it absolutely ha helps you as an individual going to CES as an attendee or as the media to have a very solid plan. So I decided late in the game uh, whether I was gonna go to CES and because I decided late in the game, I had not necessarily had the opportunity to book as many appointments or meetings with folks as I wanted to. So I wanted to remain as flexible as I could with my approach, but that required me to bring a lot of gear. But in addition to kind of this core video gear that I brought, I also brought a switch pod. Never used it, I thought I was going to. I also brought my Peak Design travel tripod and I brought a fluid head uh, and I never used that. Um, so all of the B-roll that I captured, while it wasn't the smoothest, I think it was acceptable given the timing of the content. I'm never gonna be the, the first to market, you know, for a new video, it's just, that's just how it is. I use, right, the quality of my content to differentiate myself from people who are being, you know, first on the scene. So I'm okay with that, but I really should have learned that in this instance, you know, it didn't really matter. I was able to capture video using my camera and being handheld, and it turned out halfway decent, right? I was able to stabilize it in post uh, in Final Cut, and it came out pretty well. Long story short, I would say that the travel tripod was probably overkill. It's super light, it's all carbon fiber. It's like three pounds or two and a half pounds, but again, overkill. It's all weight, and it, it adds up at the end of the day. I also brought my 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro in addition to my iPad Pro. Now, here was my thinking. I was gonna use my iPad Pro to consume content in downtime, and I was gonna use my MacBook for all my video creation, uh, which turned out, you know, the, uh, the second half of that statement tried, turned out to be true because I was able to do all my video creation on the MacBook Pro, but I didn't use the iPad Pro at all. I used it, I don't think I even opened it more than maybe 10 or 15 minutes while I was there uh, because I was just so busy. I was going to shows, walking, so much walking. I think I did like 10 miles one day or 13 miles. It's totally overkill. So you probably don't need your MacBook Pro. Next year, I definitely would bring the Sony uh, camera. I definitely would bring one camera and I wouldn't bring two. I would not bring two lenses. I would not bring a 24 and an 85. I would get something like the 24 to 70 G Master that Sony offers or maybe just the 24. I like the 24 millimeter because it's super bright and I like the fact that the aperture ring is on the lens itself so you don't have to use you know, the, the controls on the camera. You can simply rotate the lens to change the aperture in addition to changing you know, the focus. So I like that a lot. The 85 millimeter, as much as I love the image coming out of it, it was something I never used. So I would definitely not bring that and as I said, I would probably get a single lens, maybe 24 to 70 to bring as a, you know, as a workhorse for that. For my audio setup, what I wouldn't bring with me, I, I would try and get a smaller on-camera mic to get uh, as good audio. I wouldn't bring this huge shotgun microphone. Uh, it's completely overkill. I would bring my Mix Pre 3 because it is the best mixer I've ever used. And uh, I wouldn't bring the wireless mics unless I knew ahead of time I was gonna be using them in some kind of scenario. I would say that I probably would bring like a traditional you know, traditional mic uh, in the event that I wanted to interview people, but only if I set that up ahead of time because it's, I don't want to have the extra weight in my bag. That's just heavy. And so it really would help if you're a single individual or an individual content creator, see if you can get someone to go with you. I know it sounds funny, but if you can, because it greatly reduces not the amount of work, but the friction with creating content because you have someone there that can help you doing the audio, doing the video, setting up, it's just, it's it's really, it really would help. And I wish that uh, I'd had that this time. So next year, Steve, you better take some vacation time for that. Now, I could also say that I was thinking about bringing my gimbal, uh, what is this, the Ronin S, and I'm so glad that I didn't because it was, it would have been even heavier and I would have been in hell. Uh, but that is the story there. Now, all in all, CES was very productive. I would say that I would definitely go back next year. Again, I would change those few things, single lens, single mic, no tripod, Definitely no gimbal. Uh, I stayed at the MGM Signature, which was, in my mind, it was a, a good location. Uh, I bought it, got it on Airbnb, and so it was relatively, it was very inexpensive for what, how late I booked. Uh, and I would say that it's a good location. 
when staying in a hotel, you know, the problem always is that everything in the hotel costs like exorbitant amounts of money, you know, relative to going somewhere else. So a dinner for a single person is like $35. Uh, and, you know, when you're trying to create content, edit video, and, you know, get on with your day, that's a little bit of a disappointment that it costs so much. But it could be worse, right? Uh, I am thankful for the opportunity to go to CES, and I look forward to going uh, next year. Now, you might not know this, but going to CES, if you are, you know, if you're media or a YouTuber or whatever the case is, as media, it doesn't cost you anything to go to it to get a CES ticket. It's actually, it's free, one. Two, they give you lunch every day. Many people don't know that as well. And three, the really thing that you have to cover is your, you know, your airfare. Uh, your lodging and any other food that you need to eat during the time. So it's not dirt cheap, but it's certainly not very expensive because you don't have to worry about paying to get into the conference and paying for lunch every day. But other than that, it was a great trip, met a lot of great people, and it was very fruitful. I was able to build relationships with content creators to you know see who people are, put names to faces, and learn about their problems, you know, and have conversations about that in addition to building relationships with brands, right? So people that I like their products, they might like my content, and seeing if there's any type of match there because in reality, uh, you want to be able to have the opportunity to one, work with, you know, work with brands that you you identify with on some level, and two, that you can communicate to your audience in a meaningful way. Now, I haven't had the opportunity to do that yet, and I'm being all truthful with you, but in the future, right, if I have a brand where I like what they sell, and I think that it would benefit you, if there's some type of mutual agreement there, there is, uh, I mean, there there has to be a road that you could or path you could take forward in order to benefit both you and the brand. I'm not talking about writing reviews for money or pushing things that I don't like or would never use, but it's really about making sure that the needs of your audience and the needs of you know financially the needs of you as a creator and everything is being kind of uh, harmonized on a level playing field. So that is gonna wrap it up for me, folks. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about CES attending, what gear you're bringing. You know, you might not even be watching this video now. I think it's gonna be popular next year as CES kind of ramps up. But I am Mike, and I will talk to you in the next one.